Welcome to the Disciple Makers broadcast. I am Prophetess Marilyn Fisher. Today I'm going to start the broadcast a little bit different. I have a scripture I'd like to share with you. Romans, the first chapter, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The reason why I shared that with you is my guest today, his life epitomizes this scripture. I want to welcome to you a special guest with Living Witness Television, Disciple Makers broadcast today. He is a man that God has given a grand stage in the hip hop arena. He is a man who's also familiar with adversity. In his early years, divorce, ravished his life. He even considered suicide. But God has brought him back from all of that and he's come back strong. I want to welcome Kevin Burgess, a man who you're going to enjoy meeting today. Most of you know him as KB. KB. <laughs> KB, welcome to the Disciple Makers broadcast. Yes, 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 yes. Appreciate you having me. It is so awesome to talk with you today. Yes. Now, you know, I said you came back all the way from the possibility of even suicide. Right, right. Tell us about that journey. Well, you know, for me, it's just very, um, um, I had a very uh, dark, introspective um, few years. Uh, as a teenager where I lived a lot in my in my mind and was trying to figure out who I was what what did I what was I put here and um, just kind of what direction I wanted to go in because I felt pulled through the various influences that I saw on TV that I saw mm -hmm. in the neighborhood that I saw in my family so I just found myself really wrestling I had a struggle that even my family wasn't hip to that there was this really um uh depression d depression like you know mm -hmm. sickness you know sort of you know sitting in with me mm -hmm. uh, setting in with me and um and i didn't realize that a lot of that was just manifestation of the fact that um i uh needed to be connected to the one who made me who made me excuse me mm -hmm. and um i found uh a, a, a continual sense of uh um danger was my experience regularly and uh, even if danger wasn't that i was just scary you know um so and it wasn't that you were seeking an adventure for those things that were on the yeah. edge right right oh, were you seeking that or yeah. was that something that just you found yourself into well i found i found myself trying to figure out how do i get rid of this darkness i feel on the inside i feel Emptiness. Empty. And I and I felt it for a long time. I can think back to like the second grade. This has been this progressive uh question mark that was forming in my soul. Mm. And um uh I've I thought of ways to get rid of that disillusionment and that that unrest. Mm -hmm. And uh I thought it was in maybe money, I thought maybe it was in uh, education, I mm -hmm. thought maybe it was girls. Um, I even dabbled a little bit into, you know, drugs, marijuana. Uh, <laughs> so for those who are like, hey, he's doing... <laughs> um, but anyways, um, so I, I I was trying to figure out how do I... I don't want to feel this way anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe leaving this life was on the table as well. Because I wanted to escape this continual state of, of um, uncertainty. So I, I, I'm guessing, based on what you said, that that state of mind progressively caused you to question, what is this question mark all yeah. about? Because you've tried everything, right, right, and right. nothing is working. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for me it was um, I felt ripe, you know, I felt ripe for salvation, um, which we all are. I think people just don't realize it. Um, because you can find something that will make you feel better. There's a lot of stuff out there that mm -hmm. you can try. That will, man, I understand your whole God thing, but I feel good with the thing that I have. And that, people don't realize that that is actually, that's cursed. I mean, to find a plausible enjoyment that makes me forget about God is not good for me. But my 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 greatest need is to be connected with the one who made me uh, through Jesus. And when 
I get that sort of fullness and, and joy mm -hmm. and that sort of happiness and that sort of uh, um, certainty, mm -hmm. uh, that's the lasting kind. That, uh, that works for you. Yeah, yeah. Now, you said that um, a friend introduced you to God and to also hip-hop. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, there was, I went. I was in this accelerated um, learning program where I, I got to start college early. And mm -hmm. uh, there was an individual, the other black guy in that program, <laughs> um, who uh, I heard was a rapper. And um, I approached him about, you know, maybe battle rapping me. <laughs> and uh, he was like, I don't really do that type of thing. I'm a Christian. And um, uh, I, I, remember, I remember being struck by that. I thought it was strange that he would just say that and would be bold with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I saw the same individual later on um, eating lunch with a Christian hip hop CD on the table. Mm -hmm. And he gave me that CD and it had eight songs on it. I loved every single song. And the eighth wow. song was a gospel presentation. And I have been walking with God since I got that CD. My God. Yeah. So what do you say to someone who says that hip hop does not work? It's not really a gospel message. Right. Um, well, I would say you're right. Hip hop is not the message. But, you know, the gospel is, it doesn't discriminate as long as it can be heard clearly. If you're, if you're mixing the gospel with something that's going to compromise this message, mm -hmm. then that's a problem. But if it's, it doesn't matter the, the color of the cup. If it holds water, we want to drink out of it. So, um, and I would say the gospel is very, and hip hop is the conduit. So it's not the message, but it is a great, um, uh, a vehicle, uh, yeah, vehicle vessel for mm -hmm. the gospel. And I'm, I'm a testament to it, you know, and nobody can, I mean, I've, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a decade into this and, uh, you know, I've, I've had, there's been all these movements that have come through the church with people rising up and saying different things and, and, you know, pointing to all these, these, um, examples of why we shouldn't do this and stuff like that but and i've you know we've went to the scriptures we've looked at history we've mm -hmm. argued everything you can imagine but at the end of the day it people works. are changed i was changed by it <laughs> yeah. so i'm just it gonna works. keep doing it yeah amen amen <laughs> and you know i i love some i love your lyrics because um you know uh, you talk about the very deep things of god right you know undefeated Right. And um, I've had the opportunity to actually uh, be in one of your performances and hear you talk about some of the campaigns and different things that you're doing around the world. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very much committed to my church in Tampa, Florida, Living Faith Bible Fellowship. And um, before the rap, my plan was to be a missionary. Uh, oh. That's what I went to school for. That's what I was trained in theologically. Um, and... Uh, I always want to be involved in helping people, you know, even if I'm not passing, even if I'm not like doing something explicitly Christian, uh, I feel called to help humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I know I want to be doing with my life, whether it's social work or, or, you know, planning churches, I want to help people. Um, so so uh, you're, are, are you actually saying that hip hop and rap was not your first choice? No, 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 no. I mean, I, I've always wanted to, like I said, help people and specifically with opening them to a clear understanding of who God is. Uh, because I, I believe if you see God clearly, you will be impressed with what you see. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to school to train to learn to do that. Mm -hmm. So if Lecrae and Reach Records hadn't have come along, I would probably, I'd probably have my doctorates by now and I'd probably either have a counseling pr practice somewhere or I'd be in some random country you know, trying Serving to serve God. people. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a beautiful heart. You you mentioned Lecrae. You've done a lot of work with a lot of different artists. Yeah, yeah. So t talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I've, I got I've, I've got some good friendships with uh with people um who uh have mass follows followings mm -hmm. and um yeah it's when I have found that when our faith is what unites us mm -hmm. the audience. Is really a small difference between us um, and what we have in common in faith. It just helps us to approach each other like brothers and sisters. So uh, it's been good, man. And making art out of that place uh, is very, very uh, refreshing and fun and worshipful. So, yeah. Um, now you release your first mixtape, yeah. and it, who is KB? Yes, yes. Who was KB then, and who is KB it's now? A good question. 
good question. <laughs> I think KB then was trying to figure out why the Lord put me into this industry and um, am I here to prove something? Am I here to assume some sort of position? Am I filling somebody's shoes? I don't know what I was doing. Um, and so I think KB then, very sincere, I, I, I have the same goal that I had five years or four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, which is to bring clarity to people's vision of God. But what, how I would do that, I wasn't sure. So uh, I was very green, 20, 21 year old, 22 year old guy just trying to um, survive. I think KB now is uh, I'm a family man. You know, I've, um, I got just two children. It. Yeah. Two now? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Well, the second one's on the way, November. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm pro life, so I'm a father now. <laughs> so, uh, so I got I got two kids and you know a mortgage. <laughs> so, um, I, and I and I feel like some of those things have really helped to help you push focus. me forward and to focus on mm -hmm. what it is that I'm doing here, what I'm trying to accomplish, what it means for uh, the the culture, what my presence means for black people because mm -hmm. I'm black myself so my own people and mm -hmm. what does it mean for you know Christian you know evangelical culture uh, I feel very much focused and have a me and I have a message and an aim for each one each of the audiences that I'm you know I have my hands in every arena that you yeah. touch yeah um now if I met Lecrae for example and I asked him about KB well, how would he describe you? Um, well, I would. I I know he has described me before, so I guess I can just go <laughs> off of that. I think he would. He 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 always used to call me fat. You know, uh, <laughs> F A C, faithful, available. Okay, I, I didn't see that. I am getting fat too, though, but I'm I'm working <laughs> Must on that. Be the baby. <laughs> the baby. baby fat. Yes. Um. So, uh, yeah, I think he would call me faithful, available, and teachable. Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. Um. What did he see in you? Because there's a lot of rappers in the game right now. Right. So what did he see in you as far as that he wanted to sign you up with Root Track Right. Records? Well, I think, you know, one is what he saw in my, my squad. I had a, uh, a, a robe with pretty thick with a group of brothers and sisters called HGA. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, which stands for His Glory Alone. And um, uh, Repeat that again. HGA, which stands for His Glory Alone. His glory alone. Yes. So okay. uh, we were uh, very, very vocal in Tampa. And, uh, you know, we were everywhere that people would have us rapping, singing, doing poetry, evangelizing, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, you know, helping to level parking lots. We did it all, you know what I'm saying? So um, and I think it's what he saw in us that really drew him to, because it reminded him of what they have with 116. Uh, a small version of it in Tampa. I see. Now, would people describe you as shy? No, not really. Not really. No, I don't think so. I think I am an introvert in my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm I'm pretty, you know. Outgoing. Yeah, I, I, I can know, turn I, it on. I, I'm I can turn it on on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you turn it on, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, awesome performance. <laughs> um, so what 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 I know that you're working on a new video very soon. Yeah. Um, is that something that's going to take place very in the very near future? Yeah. Well, we're working on two videos. Both of them require a whole lot of effort. So uh, one video is is a, a, like a four or five month process uh, because we're, we're kind of trying to do something that isn't often done. So. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> we're why, why is out. it not often done? Why, why uh, because we're taking the animation route, which is very uh, expensive and long. And, and, and that's a new yeah. trend, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, so that we, I had all these, all these ideas for a video, and the only way I saw it being able to, us being able to pull it off well, is to actually draw it out. So, um, so that's what we're doing. And it's a drawn out process. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. Now, sideways. Yes. Where where the where did the inspiration come from? Um, yeah, so my, my production team, Cobra, uh, with the team that I work with the most, they were working on that for actually for Lecrae. And um, I guess Lecrae lost some steam with wanting to create music and I was like, I would like that. 
Oh. And uh, so he gave it to me, and then from there, it was a different hook before, uh, but around sideways. But I came in and rewrote the hook, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, had the guy's name is Perfect re-recorded, and we came up with this this sort of feeling and this concept of leaning into that which causes people to look at you strange. That is interesting because I've heard critics say like the symbolism and uh, being in a box. And yeah. there are a lot of critics that uh, have things to say about that. Like yeah, yeah. you guys have sold out. How do you answer your critics? Yeah, I would say um, you, you always want to measure a man by what he says about Jesus. And I, I would, I would, I would be very careful um, to write someone off that could very well be doing the work of God and uh and in the plans yeah of God. yeah yeah I mean and you I mean you got you got you got to be careful with that because a lot of people that say they're doing the work of God and feel like they're above uh they're above criticism and above rebuke and that's not the case uh but we want to be careful with those who and who name Jesus and if their message about him is consistent like if he's preaching the same gospel that he's been preaching from the beginning, and living it. yeah, that that right there is what you want to really measure a man by, you know. It's that's so yeah. well said, yeah. so well said. You know, I've really enjoyed our time together yes. uh, today, and it has been really um, interesting getting to know you a little bit better. Yes, because the Kate, you, you're a little bit more reserved. Yes. As a person, but on stage, you turn it up. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for yes. being on Living Witness TV and Disciple Makers Broadcast today. Yes, yes. God bless. Thank you for